Welcome back. This is going to be a video on how to work two and four row stripes flat in garter stitch and stockinette and how to manage the color changes at the right hand edge. So we've got a variety of swatches here and I'm going to show you each one in detail in a few minutes after we go through some of the techniques. Um, we're going to start out with doing the uh, two row garter stitch, how to attach a color to start off with, and then how to manage the color changes on this edge. So we'll put these aside for now. We'll come back to them as we, excuse me, as we cover each one. Okay, here we've got, I've just got some stitches on here to get started and we're going to start a second color. Now there's two ways to do this and one way to not do it. The first is to just start knitting and that's what I usually do because I don't want to take time to do anything extra but for some people this creates an issue and I'll show you what it is in just a second. So we're going to knit over. We're going to be working in garter stitch. I only have 10 stitches on here so it should go pretty fast. This video is in conjunction with a tutorial that I have <clears throat> on color work. And I'm starting out with the very basics, which is how to change colors at the beginnings of the rows in stripes. Now we're going to work back. And we've got that loose stitch here, see, because it's not attached. Not only is that stitch loose, but this one's loose too, where the green is coming off. So we have those two loose stitches. They don't bother me, but some people it bothers them a lot. So I'm going to show you this method first, and then I'll show you the second method. So you just have to bear with me getting across those 10 stitches. Okay, here we come. We've got that big loose stitch. I just tighten it up, work it. And then later on, I'll come back and adjust the tension on that. And I'll weave in the ends. So that's that big stitch there. You can pull the tail, tighten it up to the tension that you want. Or you can start out differently. So I'm going to clip this green thread and we'll attach it as if it were a new thread to the white. So we have our white here. Let's tighten up the tail. We have our white here. And we're going to attach the green as if it's a new color, okay? So the way you do that, the way you don't do it, is you do not tie these two in a knot. Because you won't be able to get it out. And you don't want to have knots along the side of your knitting. So what I do do is make just a little slip knot with the new color. The new color is the green. So I'm going under the white and then through the green and it just makes a little slip knot in the green. Well we didn't do that right did we? It's this two-dimensional. We're making a slip knot. Here's our slip knot. You don't need to pull it real tight. Slide it up on the white until it's next to the stitch. Now that secures your end. Then when you're done, before you weave in the ends, you take out that slip knot. If you tied a regular knot, you wouldn't be able to get it out because both ends would be involved. This way, just your free end is involved. The white is not. So now we're going to knit across in the green. We're working in garter stitch, remember, so we're just knitting all of the stitches. And we're going to knit across and come back and then we're going to talk about how to change the colors each color change without cutting and starting a new yarn. We're going to carry this yarn up the side, both of these yarns, the green and the white. And we're first we're going to do it with just two row stripes, then we'll do it with four row stripes so you can see all the techniques and what not to do. I'm going to also show you what not to do. 
Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a thrower or a picker. It's not about the knitting here. It's about what do you do with those yarn, the strands of yarn at the right edge when you want to change colors. Okay, here we are. Now we want to go to white. Here's our white down here. It made the last stitch. Here's our white. What we want to look at when we go to start the next row is we want to make sure that our last white stitch, which is right here, can you see it, is not pulled up too tight. We want it to have the same amount of yarn as the rest of these stitches. So what I do is I look at this side and you can see the pearl bumps from this side. They should all be about the same size. If you're pulling it too tight when you go to start the next row, you're going to tighten this up to well there's nothing. If you see nothing there or a little bitty thing like this, you know you've pulled it too tight. And you need to you're going to have to use a tapestry needle or something like that to loosen this up because once it's tight, it's hard to get it loosened. So you've got to give it some space there. Now it's back to normal. So now your options are you've got the green yarn and you've got your white. Got all these tails here. We have our green yarn and our white yarn right here that we're working with. Let's put this tail in the back. And see how it's tied on there? You could untie that later on. So we have our green yarn, that tail wants to keep poking in there, get over there, okay. So we have our green yarn and our white yarn that are active yarns. Now we're going to be using the white yarn next. Do you bring the white up this way or do you bring the white up this way? You have a choice. So first, let's do it this way. Let's drop the green in the front, pick the white up from behind. And this is the way that you ought to do it. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. And then I'll show you what it looks like if you do it the other way and what happens. So the green is in the front. You can still see it here. It's hanging in the front. We picked up the white from behind and we're going to knit over and work back. Now we're going to work back. I don't normally knit this slow, but when I'm looking through my camera while I'm knitting, I just have a two-dimensional surface, um, and so it's mostly by feel. It slows me down. So now we're back over to this side. We've got our white yarn. We have our green yarn from the previous rows. The white will come down the front, the green will come up from the back. And this keeps a really tidy edge. So the white comes down over the front, you just drop it to the front, pick the green up from the back, and you continue working. So let's see what that looks like. We have all these little swatches here. Let's take a look at these. Okay, this swatch is worked the way we were seeing. So where when you drop the old color in the front, pick the new color up from the back, and this is the side where all the color changes happen. And you can see it looks really tidy. It almost looks as good as this side over here where we didn't do any color changes. We're just doing our all of our garter stitch. Looks very, very nice. 
If we happened to wrap the yarn in the opposite direction, look what it does. It creates this barber pole. Do you see that? And it's very obvious. It stands out. Let's compare the back side of this one. So which one do you like better? I like this one because this side looks like this side. I don't like this. And you, this type of design you wouldn't be slipping the edge stitches because this is not something you can do with slipped edge stitches. You cannot change colors every two rows when you're slipping the edge stitch. So you would have to say, okay, I'm not going to slip the edge stitches, so I'm not going to slip them over here either because then both sides won't look the same. It'll look kind of funky. So this is the best method. It's where you drop the old color in front, pick the new color up from behind. Now the next thing that we want to worry about in doing this, both of these were worked in that same manner, is the tension that you use when you're pulling this stitch letting the white hang down, pulling the green up, letting the green hang down, pulling the white up. If you pull it too tight, it sure looks tidy, yes. But look what happens. I'm going to take the magnification off so we can compare her. See how far I can stretch that side? See how far I can stretch that side? This is what happens a lot of times when people are knitting scarves where they're doing the color changes on one side and oftentimes you'll also have increases on these sides. You, and you have a, a triangular or half circle scarf uh, doing these techniques and you'll end up with one side that's very, very stretchy and the other side that has very little stretch. So you have to be really careful about how you pull these yarns up and how tight you pull them. Over here, I tried to pay close attention to how much I was uh, pulling up on the yarn when I changed colors. So I have a lot of stretch on this edge. I have about as much stretch as I do on this edge. So let's talk about how do you do that. Okay, let's magnify it. Okay, now we're back to magnification. We're going to, remember, we're going to drop the white in the front and the green's going to come up from the back. And remember, before I mentioned looking at the back of your work, you want to make sure that that last green stitch is not pulled too tight, that you have the same tension in that stitch as you do its neighbors. So that means when you pull this green stitch up to knit, you're not going to be pulling it tight. You're just going to pull it until it reaches up there adequately. You're not going to put any tension on it. So when you make the first stitch, there's only enough tension to make the stitch. You're not pulling on it any tighter than that. Then you can go to your normal tension to do the rest of the stitches. Okay, so that's how we do that. Now I'm going to talk about how to work these this in stockinette stitch. Okay, so I'm going to work back. And we're going to work this row in pearls because now we're starting stockinette stitch instead of garter stitch. If you were working in the round, um, you would be employing the jogless jogs, which I have videos on those too, if you want to take a look at them. So now we have worked two rows of stockinette stitch, and we're going to change colors, right? Let's get some more yarn out here. Okay. The green's going to come in the front. The white's going to be picked up from behind. And you want to make sure that this last white stitch is not pulled tight. So I look at the back and I make sure that this pearl bump right here is not pulled too tight. And it looks just fine the way it is. So I bring the white up underneath the green. The green's in the front. The white's coming up from behind. And I knit across. And then we'll purl back 
and we'll change colors again and then we'll look at our swatch so you don't have to watch my boring knitting too much remember this is the same whether you're a thrower or a picker or continental or English it doesn't matter because it's not about the knitting it's about how to manage the yarns at the at the edge so we know that we need to always drop the old color in front and pick up the new color underneath this applies to almost all color work there are some exceptions if you're doing single row garter stitch or single row single row stripes in garter stitch or single row stripes in stockinette it can be a little bit different than two rows so now we've done two rows of our white we're going to bring the white to the front pick up the green from behind now we don't have to look behind anymore to see if that green stitch is the right size it's a little bit big so we can tighten it up a little bit okay that looks good bring the yarn up from behind white in the front and we're going to knit across so let's look at this swatch we'll knit across and see what this swatch looks like and how the edge looks so this is about carrying the yarn up the right side okay so here we have our two row stockinette stitch swatch this is the right side that's where we carried the colors this is just the normal knitting and this looks pretty good the color is carried up it pulls it right to the inside so you can't see it from the edge or the front and if you were seaming this you would be seaming right along this line in between the edge stitch and the first stitch in from the edge this is where your seam would fall right there so these stitches would be underneath so you have this lovely edge I really can't think of an instance in uh, any other knitting unless you're going to be seaming this or picking up stitches where you would be doing stripes flat without some sort of edging for example you could do the stripes like this but then do the garter stitch edging to keep the edges from curling so you'd line it up like that so that's with the two rows in stockinette now let's talk about four rows in garter stitch it looks like this and let's see how we do that actually let's do the four rows in stockinette first since we have two rows well we can do garter stitch we'll do garter stitch Let's keep with the sequence so we're going to knit three more rows in the green but we've got to carry that white up the edge so how are we going to do that let's see you'll always be untwisting your yarn when you're doing this too because obviously you're twisting it every time we have our white down here and your tendency would to be just to do your next row of garter stitch right but you're not going to what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that that white stitch is a good size it's a little bit big there so we're going to make it a little bit smaller not this one not this one this one right here this one we can bring the size down a little bit by going like that it's this stitch we're concerned about right here we don't want it too small so we're going to bring the yarn in the front the green yarn in the front the white yarn to the back and we bring the green yarn underneath the white yarn and back up to the top and we're going to knit with it what does this do it pulls that white yarn up see along the side and you'll see in the next row how it pulls the white yarn actually to the back of the fabric
and it's virtually hidden. There are some drawbacks on this. You can end up with that right edge being too tight because you have pulled the uh, color changes too tight. You haven't left enough tension, enough ease in the tension to allow the side to stretch. So we just have to be aware of that and I'll show you how to do that when we get back over there. Do you ever have those dreams where you can't move your legs at night? I think they must be stuck in the blankets or something, but that's what it's like knitting through your camera. It's like your fingers don't do exactly what you want them to do. Now we're back over to this side. We've done two garter ridges in the green. Our white was carried. Do you see how it pulled it right up in that little bump right there? just pulled the white right up there. So now we're going to change to white and what we're going to do is we drop the green in the front, we pick up the white from behind, it's always the same. Old color in the front, new color in the back, and we're being, being careful to not pull that white too tight. We don't want to shrink this stitch right here and we want to allow stretchability on the edge of the fabric. We don't want this edge to be tighter than the other edge where there are no color changes. So let's look at that swatch. Here's the swatch with the four row garter stitch you can see how tidy it looks. The color is carried up this side right here. You can see the greens there, the whites there. It's virtually invisible. If this were the edge of a scarf, that would look, be very acceptable. It looks nice. It looks nice from the edge. So now let's talk about doing four row stripes in stockinette. So we'll do this one, four rows in stockinette, and you'll see how that color change looks. This is the beginning of a series. I'm working on a tutorial for a scarf that is a sampler in color knitting. It involves, it's going to start out with the garter stitch, then there's going to be some slip stitch knitting, mosaic, then intarsia, then stranded, then brioche, and double knitting. Now we're over to this edge, and your inclination would just be to turn and start the next row, but no, you need to bring the white yarn to the front, the green yarn to the back. Take the white yarn underneath the green yarn and bring it up and carry on knitting. At this point, it doesn't. you don't want to pull the green yarn tight, you want to keep it nice, soft, and we're going to knit and then purl. And there's a written tutorial that goes along with this, with pictures and directions and how to work it in any gauge with any yarn. It'll be available on Ravelry. I also have a group called Knitting with Suzanne on Ravelry. You can join that if you want. That's where we're doing the knit along for this scarf. And I have a Facebook group called Knitting with Suzanne. You're welcome to join either one of those. In fact, I invite you to. I would love for you to join them. And I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can continue seeing my videos. You will get a notification when I make a new video. There is no charge for that. Some people are worried they're going to be charged for subscribing to a video. There are no charges. Nothing bad happens. You just get notifications when I make a new video. Okay, so we're at the end of four rows of stockinette. Now, see the little green blip there? But that's where we carried it. If we just pulled a little bit, it comes out. 
We do not want to affect the size of the stitch down here. It's nice. So we just take the white yarn in the front, the green yarn in the back, and we carry on with knitting the green yarn. Just like we have been. Etc. Now I do want to show you two more things and that is about weaving in the ends so it really makes the edges look good. So let's do just a couple of them, okay? Here's the one in stockinette. Let's do this one. So here let's take a tail, the white tail, and we're going to weave the end in. So we're going to thread a needle. We're going to turn the work over. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate stitch. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to duplicate stitch on the reverse side. I have a whole video on this technique of weaving in ends if you would like to see it. But this is really what finalizes your, pro your projects is weaving in the ends properly. And this method is virtually invisible and will not ever pull out. I can guarantee it. It will not pull out. It won't pull to the front of your work. You need to do two or three of these duplicate stitches. I'm doing two. We're going to trim it not too short. After I block it then I trim it really short. But I leave about an eighth of an inch. Now watch. When I pull this way, do you see that tail does not move? When I pull this way, the tail does not move. That is not ever going to come out. Now let's try one in garter stitch. Let's do this one. In garter stitch, so here I'm going to choose the white just because it's easy to see. We're actually duplicate stitching over the green there. But I go under two or three. Same thing. You want to pull it about the same tension as the surrounding stitches. My thread's so short here. I'm just going to do that one because I didn't leave a very long tail. But you can see how that goes through. In fact, I'm going to do this one too just so I can pull it and show you. I want you to see how effective this is. Okay, you want to have the, about the same tension as the surrounding stitches. Won't come out. Does not show through to the front. And of course I would trim that tail. Like that. Okay, so uh, watch out for the second video in this series on the color work tutorial. Subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye. Happy knitting.